Hey everyone, what's up and welcome to another video. Devouring Plague, reworked void form, Shadow Word Death baseline, with all of those things considered, it's no coincidence that this expansion's named Shadowlands. Today, we're going to be taking an in-depth look at Shadow, exploring what's changed and how good they are before then going over races, conduits, covenants, soulbinds, and even legendaries, giving you all the information you need to set up your Shadow Priest from day one for PvP. Starting off, let's quickly recap the changes that have happened to Shadow Priests. Devouring Plague, Power Infusion, and Desperate Prayer, and Shadow Word Death have all been returned to Shadow Priest baseline. Yes, you heard that right. Power Infusion and Devouring Plague. This version of Devouring Plague is no longer a CD or requires orbs. Instead, it costs 50 insanity, and this change couldn't have been better in my opinion. It does very high damage and even heals you for half of the damage done. Void Form has also been reworked. No longer is it something that you constantly cycle and instead now has a 1.5 minute CD and lasts for a static 15 seconds along with changes to both Mastery, which is now renamed Shadow Weaving, and instead buffs your damage to the target for each dot you have up. And when in Void form, targets gain the effect regardless of how many dots you have up. Auspicious Spirits have also been changed up. No longer is it Shadow Word Pain Crits, but instead when you Devouring Plague, Mind Blast, or Void Bolt a target, you'll spam in Apparition for every target affected by Vampiric Touch. Finally, a new passive has been added called Dark Thoughts. This is a new take on the talent Shadowy Insight. This version, however, has a chance to give you instant Mind Blast when Mind Playing a target with dots up. This proc can even be used while you're Mind Playing. As for talent trees, as you can see, there has also been quite a bit of changes. The most impactful ones here are Unfurling Darkness and Damnation. Damnation offers a way for you to get all dots up instantly with a 45 second CD, while Unfurling Darkness makes your next Vampiric Touch after casting Vampiric Touch instant. And yes, these two abilities interact with one another. As for PvP talents, there are two new big ones. Lasting Plague, which is just an extension of Devouring Plague making it last a bit longer. And the big one, which is Thought Steal. We'll get more into this later in the talent section, but my God, is this a strong talent. All right, so that's about it for the new additions. So how does it all come together? Well, Shadow Priest is looking to be insanely strong. We've kept all of our great utility with spells like Mass Dispel and Leap of Faith, gained even more defensives on top of our already strong kit. And on top of all that, we still have our instant CC. Most of the changes have just come in the way that we deal damage. Previously, Shadow was designed to be more of a ramp class, with no ability to instantly get out dots. Now, Shadow keeps all of the good things about their kit, but also gains a ton more instant damage, as well as burst. So now you have great utility, strong defensives, high sustain damage, great burst, and some of the best crowd control in the game. This makes Shadow Priest's kit as a whole completely overloaded, and are without a doubt for these reasons, the best caster going into Shadowlands right now. By the way, if you're enjoying the video, a sub to the channel would be incredible. But now let's jump straight into race choice. For Shadow Priest on the Alliance side, there is one clear winner, which is Human. This allows you to play Relentless and still have access to every man for himself. If for some reason you don't like humans, I'm a bit antisocial myself sometimes, then Void Elf or Night Elf offer weaker but decent alternatives. While on Horde, you're obviously unable to be an Orc, so it's up for debate. Panda is great for the added CC if you can get past the looks. Goblin, again, extra mobility, added haste, not too bad, but you still have to look like a goblin. Undead can also be decent for Will of the Forsaken, giving you some added CC break for fears, and of course, makes you feel like your life's a PvP movie. But overall, for Horde, just pick what you like, it doesn't really matter. All right, as we saw earlier, the new talent tree looks like this. The level 15 talent row only has one talent that you'll ever want to consider, and that's Unfurling Darkness. This makes your next Vampiric Touch after casting one instant with a short ICD. The next row is the same as BFA. Body and Soul offers some nice movement speed. Sand Lane can be taken versus pet classes, but most of the time you'll want intangibility for the healing in Dispersion and passive shorter CD. Level 30 row again, no real choices. Misery all the time just for an easy way to apply both your dots with one global. Next row, there are no changes from BFA. If you need stuns, take Psychic Horror. If you need fears but can't reach your target, Mind Bomb is the go-to. And if you're playing with a rogue, Last Word offers some nice added kill pressure. On the level 40 row, Shadow Crash has been reworked to now have some added charges, but honestly does barely any damage. 
This results in Auspicious Spirits still being the go-to, simply for added damage and insanity generation. Level 45 row, we've got the new ability that we touched on earlier, Damnation. This gets all three of your dots up instantly with a 45 second CD. There is no beating this when it comes to PvP, especially with its synergies with Unfurling Darkness. Then for the final row, Ancient Madness is the best option. While it's not fantastic, Legacy of the Void is heavily focused around PvP and turns your Void form back into its old state and we definitely don't want that. In PvP, you want to constantly be spending Insanity to reapply Devouring Plague, so Legacy just isn't an option. So some nice extra upfront crit strike is our best option for this row. This will leave your standard talents looking like this for PvP. Moving on, we have our PvP talents next for Shadow and there are two that you'll never want to find yourself without. These are Void Shift, which just speaks for itself. A super powerful defensive for both you and your team, never play without this. And Greater Faith. This adds another strong defensive to your arsenal, making you immune to all forms of damage, while also doubling up as some extra mobility or a way to avoid CC if you're not the target. Then for your last PvP talent, there are four options, which you'll want to take depending on the matchup. First is Thought Steal. This ability is completely bonkers, allowing you to steal spells from your enemies and stop them using them in the process. This is honestly only worth taking against either a mage or a warlock, as you get fear or polymorph. If you're interested in a full list of the abilities that you can steal, we've recently released a video on this spell. The second option is Lasting Plague. This adds a lot of extra overall damage, making your devouring plagues last longer. But with most classes being able to dispel diseases, you'll only ever want to pick this up if the enemy team doesn't have a dispel or if you're playing with a warlock for dispel protection then if either of these two are not offering much value you'll want to consider if you're the target in the matchup or not if you are driven to madness will offer a way to more quickly get back your void form which is now a strong defensive cd or if you're able to freely cast mind trauma hands down offers the best benefit in terms of damage stealing haste from your enemies and granting it to yourself all right now it's time to move on to the new stuff added in with shadowlands Covenants, Soulbinds, and Conduits. To start, let's cover Covenant Choice. Currently changing these is pretty punishing, but hopefully that will change, so picking the correct one for the start of the expansion is going to be extremely important just in case. Luckily for Shadow, there isn't any real question. Benthir is just head and shoulders above all the others, and that's without even taking Soulbinds into account. Benthir, as with all Covenants, offers you two abilities one Covenant ability and one class ability. For Venthyr, both of which are great additions to a priest's kit. The Covenant ability Door of Shadows allows you to cast a sort of teleport. This allows you some added mobility to then secure psychic screams or just kite or chase your enemies. Extra mobility on Priest is always welcome. The class ability for Priest is why this Covenant is so good though. It's mind games. What this ability does is deal some very strong upfront burst damage before then making the targets heal do damage and damage do healing. This can be great for helping to secure kills, preventing healing, or even preventing damage. A very cool and powerful ability. Once you pick your covenant, you have the option to pick between three soulbinds. These all offer some unique passives. For Shadow, the best pick is going to be Nagia the Mistblade. Following this route, you're able to pick up three insanely strong passives. First is Fancy Footwork. This just provides you with a burst of movement speed after using your Door of Shadows. This is great for adding mobility to either kite or secure psychic screams. The other option is Agent of Chaos, but this has been nerfed in PvP and shares a DR with Fear, so it's not too ideal for Priest. However, the most impactful node is Familiar Predicaments, and the main reason you want this Soulbind is that you gain 25% immunity to Lockouts, Snares, and Roots. With Shadow Priest having only one school of magic for damage, this one node in itself provides so much value. And lastly, the final pickup is Thrill Seeker. This is simply just a nice added boost to haste that you'll get after staying in combat for a short period. All right, so we've now got our Covenant and our Soulbind, but which conduits do we want to select? Conduits are put into three categories. These are Endurance, Finesse, and Potency. The route that we selected on our Soulbind provides us with two Potency Conduits, one Finesse, and one Endurance. The first choice is for an Endurance Conduit, and for Priests, there are three viable options, Translucent Image, Light's Inspiration, and Charitable Soul. Out of these three options, it's a choice between either Charitable Soul and Light's Inspiration. As Translucent Image doesn't really synergize with Greater Fade, it's not worth considering. This is quite a hard pick. Light's Inspiration offers a more personal defensive and charitable soul gives you some extra shields when you shield an ally 
Honestly, this isn't too much of a big deal, and you can pick what you want. As for me personally, I find that I shield myself a lot more than I would an ally, so I'll be taking Light's inspiration. Then for our next finesse conduit, there are another four options. Clear mind, power unto others, move with grace, and mental recovery. The only two really worth considering here are clear mind and power unto others. Since we only have the one finesse conduit, clear mind is the clear winner. Reducing the mana cost of your purge and mass dispel gives you the ability to use your utility a lot more. Finally, with the route that we've picked, we get the option to choose two potency conduits. Since you can't pick the same one twice, the options available are shattered perceptions, haunting aberrations, rabid shadows, mind devourer, and dissonant echoes. First of all, there is no question about our first pick, and that's Mind Devourer. This not only buffs Mind Blast damage, but also gives the chance at free Devouring Plagues, the best by far. After that, it's a toss-up between Haunting Apparitions and Shattered Perceptions. Shattered Perceptions will give you a lot more burst when using Mind Games, while Haunting Apparitions will provide you with a lot more consistent pressure going out. Our pick here is Haunting Apparitions. With the newly buffed Shadowy Apparitions, this conduit gains some good value when it comes to PvP. Alright, that leaves our Soulbind and Conduit Tree looking like this. Now, our final section is again a new addition in Shadowlands, Legendaries. These are all working in PvP, and as you can see, you can only equip one at a time for the time being. For Shadow, there are four main class-specific Legendaries. Eternal Call to the Void, Painbreaker Psalm, Shadow Flame Prism, and Talbadar Stratagem. All of these have their issues. Eternal Call of the Void has a low proc rate, low damage, and the tentacles can be killed. Painbreaker Psalm forces you to take damage and waste your Shadow Word Death, dealing some moderate damage. Shadow Flame Prism relies on you picking up Mindbender to access its full potential. And now with Mindbender being on the same row as Damnation, this again isn't really an option. So all three of these legendaries are not worth picking up when it comes to Arena, which leaves us with Talbadar Stratagem. This buffs your Mind Blast by 30% if you have all dots up on the target. This is the highest value DPS legendary if you know you're going to be able to cast and consistently get a Mind Blast off when you have Devouring Plague up. But that's not always going to be the case, so there are two other great options. First, if you're playing with a caster, is the legendary Twins of the Sun Priestess. This simply gives you the ability to give your teammate power infusion, while still gaining its benefits yourself. This is great for playing with specs that greatly benefit from haste, like Affliction Warlocks, for example. But if your teammate doesn't benefit greatly from power infusion, or you're facing a team with purges, this one here is a good all-around option. It gives you a boost to all secondary stats something Shadow loves, and also reduces the effectiveness of CC you receive. This is super easy to proc thanks to Dispel Magic, so it's a great option for almost every game. So, picking between these three legendaries depends a lot on the matchup and composition, but all three have their place and are very strong. Alright everyone, that's going to be everything you need to know for Shadow Priest going into Shadowlands. Just to quickly summarize, Shadow is looking in a fantastic spot. And even with tuning, I can still see them being insanely strong. Thanks for watching, and as always, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to like, subscribe, and ring that bell for more up-to-date Shadowlands content as it drops.